Over the past three years of being a medical student, it's needless to say that I've had to read a lot of books. And through experimenting and researching, I have come up with a method to reduce the time spent reading. Here's how I read around 45 pages or 9 chapters per hour. And to prove how effective this method is, I'll be testing myself with the same technique. And then to take it a step further, I will show you how much you can actually remember at the end of this by solving a Q bank using this amazing technique. Hello everyone, my name is Anuj. I'm a third year MBBS student at Government Medical College Nagpur and welcome back to my channel. It's a pleasure having you here. Anyways, what is this technique that I'm so excited to talk about today? Rather than calling it a technique, let's call it the algorithm because it has got some steps which you need to follow in a particular order for this to work. Right, let us get on with this algorithm and step one is getting to know what the subject is about. In our MBBS curriculum, there are basically two types of subjects. There is the medicine dominant or the surgery dominant. The medicine dominant subjects, you need to know the physiology of the systems and how they are connected with each other and in the surgical side of subjects you need to know what is the anatomy of that particular system. Let's take an example to understand it a bit more. Let's say you are studying the topic of liver. In a medicine subject such as a pathology, the anatomy is not really relevant at all. You need to know what are the basic functions of the liver, how the hepatocytes are, etc. But in a surgical perspective, the more important is how the anatomy of liver is, where is the gallbladder, where is the bile duct, what are the different ligaments and supports, etc. So now you get the point. Step one is getting to know the subjects and building up your foundations. No matter what subject it is, if it's your physics, you need to have your maths your integration differentiation everything known and only then you can proceed further to read the subjects right the next thing is very important in the first step only you got to know what are the important topics within this subject itself so a subject is this big right nobody's going to ask you questions from this entire thing they're going to select topics which are high yield which are more common which tend to have more importance in the real life and from that they're going to pick the question and ask you so if your purpose for study is for the examination this will also help you a lot getting to knowing these hot spots is a key to reading faster because you can then skip over the non-important topics, right? How will you know what are these hotspots then? The number one idea is to call a senior or somebody who has walked through the same path that you're walking. So a lot of times my juniors from GMC Nagpur give me a conference call and ask me about what this subject is going to be, what are the important topics and this is technically called as marking and this is where a senior is very very important at. If you are in 11th and 12th you definitely can ask your teachers as well they are very very cooperative in this one. Alternatively you can watch a lecture about how to read that subject or you can go ahead search YouTube, search Google, search QR or whatever. Just get to know what are these hotspots that you need to focus maximum on. And yes, if you're a first or second year student, you can also watch my videos to know everything about first and second year. In any given subject, you'll find the topics which will fit into any four of these quadrants. The x-axis being whether or not you previously knew that topic. For example, the anatomy of the heart. You basically knew a lot about it before you even started reading it in anatomy. And the y-axis is how difficult that topic is. Something like ECG is a bit difficult to understand compared to something like anatomy of heart. And in every subject, you can plot these x and y graphs now you will see that in here there is a bottom right quadrant which is very very important for us why is that important because in here you will find the topics which you already know and are easy to do now whatever reading you're going to be doing you have to start off from these very topics and guys these are the important topics which we just talked about so this is the easy quadrant where you start off with and you make your way all the way like this in a zigzag pattern so first you cover up all the topics that you know and then go over to the topics that you don't know. And in the upper left quadrant, you will see that these are the topics which are extremely difficult and you don't know them. These are the topics you should reserve for the last because I personally feel like completing the easy topics which you know initially will give you a sense of completion. That will give you more motivation to complete the entire subject. Motivation is a very key factor deciding whether or not you will actually end up reading or not. All right, moving on to the second step. So let's take an example over here. If you have an oven which is preheated, another one is not preheated heated it is just normal oven and you want to bake a cake which one of these ovens will you choose to bake a cake in of course the preheated one is going to be the one which will give you better results in the same way before diving on nascent into your textbook which is having difficult lines difficult concepts, difficult topics i highly suggest to you watch any lecture of that particular topic if you don't have any other paid subscription platforms go ahead search youtube you will find tens of videos over here explaining to you that topic absolutely for free if you're a neat pg aspirant i would suggest go ahead with any of the subscription platforms that you want to and i'm sure the videos over there will provide you a bit more insight as to what is given inside the book i repeat do not go nascent into the book have some idea preheat the oven before you start reading because it's going to make your life so much easier in the moment you will be seeing me studying orthopedics today and i am fast because I already watched the lecture for that particular chapter and that is what I suggest is that preheat the oven before you dive nascent into your text. Some of the platforms that I like to mention over here are first of all Marrow for NEAT PG then we have subject specific platforms like Pathoma, 
Ken Hub, Sketchy, etc. for different subjects in MBBS Life. You can also find different courses for non-medical students all over the internet. Coming to the last and the most important part and the reason why you clicked on this video is reading. How will you increase your reading speed? Any pages information that I'll be telling you is I'll be telling you with respect to the review books that we use for PG preparation. Now these books are not like your standard books. The standard books have a lot of content with worst compression ever. That means they are not at all compressed. They are extremely bulky and difficult to read. The review books on the other hand guys are very very important because they are a balance between content and compression. In a small paragraph of a review book you will know much more than a standard textbook. And that is why every PJ aspirant uses review books slash lecture notes for the preparation. So let us dive on into how you're going to be reading faster and faster. Step one is very important. It is to reduce sub vocalization. What is sub vocalization? It is a term which basically states that whenever you're reading something, you're trying to say whatever you're reading inside your mind. Let's say I'm using over here. All right, enough talking. Let's get to work here. I'm reading this sentence, but I'm also saying it inside my mind. So that is sub vocalization. You got to stop that. It's going to be difficult at first if you haven't done it anywhere before but once you try that you will be seeing that your reading speed naturally increases up to two times because what happens is that your mind has a much faster reading capacity than it has a saying capacity inside the mind i hope that makes sense all you got to do is start practicing this one by one paragraph by paragraph and you will see that within one week you are able to reduce sub vocalization by at least 50 to 60 percent and you will see the results automatically so definitely try this trick out second one is one of the most popular ones it is using your fingertips to read so what this states is that just take a book right and take open any page that you want to study use your fingertip and follow the fingertip for the line that you're reading what will this do is that your eyes will follow your fingertips and in that way they will move much faster without any sort of lag in between this all might sound like jargon to you but once you actually apply it in real life you will see the results come out automatically so reduce sub vocalization use fingertips these are single handedly the two most powerful tips that i can give you right now what should be the ideal speed for your fingertip to move it should be just that you are not able to comprehend what you're reading just that and only and only when your brain is faced with such a small challenge will it gradually change because our brain has a capacity to change it is called as neural plasticity you can remodel your brain as you wish the third tip is setting a goal what does this mean it means you got to know which topics you want to cover in one particular pomodoro session say i want to cover up injuries around the knee joint in one pomodoro i know what my goal is and only and only then will i be 100 percent focused towards it if you don't know you're just opening the textbook like a random person it won't be efficient at all just focus and plan on what you want to do beforehand right fourth tip is to set a timer what i usually do is i set a pomodoro of 30 minutes 40 minutes sometimes 90 minutes and i use this website called as bigtimer.net they are not sponsoring this video sadly and this basically shows you a very big timer of your pomodoro so what is a pomodoro and how does it work in the first place so very easy imagine that you have a very big exam tomorrow right you go to the exam center you sit in your table the teacher presents to you with your answer sheet and your paper and they give you like two hours okay you have to finish this paper so what does your mind do at that what particular moment your mind switches off all the distractions have you ever thought about what is going on instagram what is going on facebook youtube etc while you're solving a paper no all the distractive thoughts at that time are shut off right and your mind is completely focused on one particular activity and that my friends is called as a flow state so basically what we're trying to do in this pomodoro method is that trying to get your mind into that flow state for most of us the most distractive part of our life is this our, our mobile phone right so put that mobile phone away put it in a fridge i don't care but don't keep it anywhere near you turn on do not disturb mode put on zen mode do whatever you have to stay away from your phone the next one is a personal preference but it is using coffee as a means to boost your natural cognition it is well known that methyl xanthines are you know cognition stimulants and so adding a coffee to your study routine makes it a little bit fun and also gives you something to drink at while you're doing this hard work of staying in uh, in the flow state the next one is very very important i actually talked about it in one of my older videos it is the paragraph versus the line approach let's say you're reading a very standard textbook okay and it is talking about the complications of fracture of femur right and there are various complications of the fracture of neck of femur so what they usually do is that they give a heading okay the first complication is non-union and then they proceed to describe what is non-union why does it happen etc so if you're in a bit of a hurry and you already know the explanation to it what you can do is that instead of reading that entire paragraph read the first line because that first line is going to be explained in the paragraph below do only and only this if you already know what the book is going to talk about maybe you have heard it in videos maybe you know it already 
Don't do it if you're reading it for the first time because then you're going to miss out on conceptual understanding which is the key to retention. So this is a line by line approach. Again, one more example is what are the symptoms of liver failure? Instead of reading every paragraph about one symptom, alopecia, gynecomasia, spider telangiectasia, all of these have one explanation given below them, right? Instead of reading that entire paragraph, just read the first line. It is going to be very fruitful for you. The next point is super awesome. That is diagrams and flowcharts will help you clear the information of like one or two pages in a very short time. In a lot of surgical subjects, you will find that there is a management of the patient which is given. And of course, there are different managements. They've got a beautiful flowchart explaining what to do when the patient is bought to you. Once you read that flowchart and you understand what is going on, let's say from a lecture that you watched before, you are done. That entire page, next page is done because the following pages will be talking about what that flowchart has already explained to you. Diagrams. For any surgical procedure, there will be a diagram given next to the theory part. And what that will do is that it will show you what the surgery is actually about. In fact, even in medicine related subjects, there will be diagrams that will be showing you what are the clinical manifestations. So diagrams and flowcharts are the real game changers. Please don't forget them. The next one is again, a personal preference is study alone when you want to be in the flow state. If you are doing a group study, it is difficult to tap into that flow state because you will be a bit distracted no matter what. So group studies and group discussions, reserve it after you have studied a topic and discuss it after you've studied. Next one is moving your distractions away. What does that mean? That basically means throw away your phone as far as you can because that is going to destroy your life while you're studying i already talked about it but it was on the list i had to say it again right the last step is taking a break after you've done a particular pomodoro slash a topic slash a chapter and why is that so because there is a limited focus time in your mind right you have to reset it every time and by taking a break i do not mean taking a break of one hour two hour i only mean 5 10 15 minutes at max and what you have to do in this break is very do not look at your phone do not look at any electronic devices just take a walk drink some water enjoy some life you know don't, don't watch any sort of youtube videos etc just relax in this moment after you've done this meditation kind of thing uh, after your pomodoro go back to the index of the chapter look at the index and ask yourself the questions from the index for example what are the complications of a femur fracture what are the toxins released by staphylococcus aureus so all of these are given in the index and go ahead look at the index answer the questions so it will be an active recall for you the number 11 is very important that is if you subscribe to this channel your study time will increase and you will be motivated every single sunday so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider doing so i promise to make every single video to the best quality and information and every single vlog informative and filled with fun. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It would make up for all the time, effort and energy that I put into making these videos. Anyways, enough talking. Let's demonstrate how practical this method actually is. What I'll be giving myself is I'll be giving myself a Pomodoro of 40 minutes. In this 40 minutes, I have to complete X amount of chapters and then give a test to see how I perform after reading that chapter so that it becomes a little bit easier for you to grasp what I've said. You love, uh, do you feel like you were waiting for the part when life will open the door? Pomodoro 40 minutes just got ended and the result is I've studied four chapters in this 40 minutes that is pelvic fractures injuries around the hip shaft of femur around the knee so four major chapters in 40 minutes that amounts to almost 35 to 40 pages in 40 minutes that means that I am spending almost 1 to 1.2 minutes per page. So this is the power of all the tips that I've already shared in the video. And I hope that this shows up to be a practical demonstration. Now this book is Mahishwar. And as you can see over here, the pages are pretty filled up with all the data. But if you have some other book like the Marrow Edition 5 Notes, there's going to be a lot of empty spaces within the notes. So that's going to make your reading even more faster. Of course, the amount you're going to be reading also depends upon the type of book you're using, your internal motivation to do subject and the difficulty of the subject and for me the topics which I covered today were in the upper right hand quadrant of our Cartesian system now let us just solve some of the questions to know actually how much I retained from this topic let's test it out right now so here I have done injuries of the hip joint and injuries to the femur so let us try these two out dislocations of the hip let's go what is the most common dislocation So. 
सॉल्व ट्वेल्व एम सी क्यूज उसमें से दो रॉन्ग टेन करेक्ट विच गिवस अस अ परसेंटाइल ऑफ नाइन्टी वन परसेंटाइल दैट इज एक्चुअली ग्रेट आई लव इट सो दिस इज द पावर ऑफ द टेक्निक जस्ट बाई रीडिंग एंड वॉचिंग द वीडियोज यू कैन हैव अ ग्रेट परसेंटाइल एज यू कैन सी नाइन्टी वन इज अ प्रेटी गुड वन सो आई थिंक दिस मोर देन एनफ प्रूव माई पॉइंट दैट इवन दो यू आर रीडिंग फास्टर यू स्टिल रिटेन अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन एज यू कैन सी आई गॉट नाइन्टी वन परसेंटाइल ऑन द क्यू बैंक विच आर सॉल्व विच इज अ प्रेटी गुड परसेंटाइल गिवन द फैक्ट दैट आई हैव नॉट इवन गॉट ऑर्थो एज अ सब्जेक्ट दिस ईयर इट्स गोइंग टू बी नेक्स्ट ईयर सो वट डज दिस टेल यू दिस बेसिकली टेल्स यू दैट इफ यू अपलाई दिस टेक्निक वाइल यूजिंग योर रिव्यू बुक्स वाइल री यूजिंग एनी बुक्स इट विल डेफिनेटली वर्क ऑल यू हैव टू डू इज फिक्स योर माइंड टू इट एंड यू कैन डू एनीथिंग in all it took me around one day to make this video come to you so if you could just help me by pressing the subscribe button in one second it would make up for all of that effort i put for the entire day anyways thanks a lot for watching it's your boy anuj i'll catch you in the next one bye